What's going on people and welcome to episode number two of Whiteboard Wednesdays, the short video series where I'm going to talk about stuff and I'm going to use a whiteboard. The topic this week is a topic that any personal trainer or fitness coach is going to get at some point and so I figured I might as well answer it once and for all here in this video. And the question, quite simply, is this. Can you target specific areas of body fat? If I was to answer this in short, it would be... Okay, so the short answer is no. You can't target specific areas of body fat on you. But let's get into the conversation a little bit more. Why is that the case? We need to first understand the difference between adipose tissue and muscle tissue. Adipose is just a fancy word for fat, so understand the difference between fat tissue and muscle tissue. Muscle and fat are very different. Their purposes are different, they grow in different ways, and they shrink in different ways, right? And so let's go over those things. In terms of muscle, what is the purpose? Well, a muscle is simply strands of fiber that cross a joint in order to move that joint. Okay, so my biceps, for example, it starts up here and it comes down past the elbow and then it shrinks, it, it contracts in order to move the elbow. And so muscles are strands of fiber that move you. Their purpose is to move you. They grow by putting them under stress, so exercise, and then giving them the appropriate nutrients that they need in order to rebuild long, larger and stronger. And then the muscle shrinks when you do the opposite, right? When you stop putting it under the stress, so you stop exercising it, and when you no longer give it the nutrients that it needs to rebuild itself properly. Fat, on the other hand, is very different. So the purpose of fat, really what, what fat is, is it's stored fuel. So when you're eating food, when you're consuming calories, if you consume extra energy, extra calories, your body doesn't just get rid of that. It says, well, let's store this for when things get tough and we might need to use that stored energy sometime later on. And so it stores it in your body in the form of fat. And it grows exactly that way. The more fuel that you consume, that's more fuel than what your body is spending, the more that, that energy is gonna be stored in your body as fat. The way to get rid of it is simply to start asking your body to be using that stored energy rather than the energy that you're eating through your food. So what this means, unfortunately, is that doing your 100, 150, 200 sit-ups every single day is not doing anything for the fat that's covering that muscle. Sure, you might be working on the abdominal muscles that are underneath the fat, but unfortunately, working the muscles underneath doesn't just call upon all those fat cells be like, hey, let's use all that energy right into these uh, you know, muscle cells and then use it. That's not, unfortunately, how that works. I wish it was. But let's talk about uh, the next part of this question, which is what decides where the fat gets stored in your body? There's two main things that decide where in your body it's going to choose to store the, the extra fuel, the, the fat. And those two things are genetics and hormones. And now if you think about a simple example, the difference between males and females, they're gonna have different genetics and different hormones that's gonna cause them to store their body fat in different areas of their body. In guys, most often the case, we're gonna store it in our gut and in our love handles. For girls, most often the case, they're gonna store it in the arms and the thighs. Now that's just the typical example that you're gonna see often case, um, but again, it's because of the genetics and hormones. So an example, cortisol is your stress hormone. So people who are very, very stressed actually tend to have more of their fat deposited in their gut. And so it's just one extra reason to be uh, focusing on stress management on top of focusing on your, uh, your moving, your eating, and your sleeping, right? Those are the three main pillars that we're always gonna come back to. They always, always work. And so really it's just about optimizing that. How are you moving, how are you eating, and how are you sleeping? Stress management should be done within that context in order to avoid crazy levels of cortisol so that we avoid the crazy levels of fat deposited on the gut. Now don't get hyper-focused on the cortisol-gut stress relationship. It's just one example of how hormones might affect where fat is stored in your body. Now again, this video probably hasn't been too helpful just yet. It's been most educational. So I'm hearing you. Well, what do I do, Owen? What's next? How do I actually get rid of this? Well, let's talk about that. So lastly on the whiteboard then, we've got what is the best exercise that I can do in order to get rid of fat? And my answer might surprise you, it might not. But my answer to that question would be full body strength training. That does mean lifting weights. Now, 
There's two main reasons why I would say this. Reason number one is something that's called excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. A big fancy scientific word that we often just shorten into something called EPOC. And what that simply means is that after you're done your workout, your body is still in hyperdrive. It's still working to get itself back to homeostasis, meaning it's just trying to cool itself down and recover properly. And that process, EPOC, is using fuel. It's burning energy. It's burning calories. And full body strength training is the best way to produce a large EPOC. That means that no matter when you do your workout, you're still in that um, hyperdrive to burn extra calories throughout your whole day afterwards. A simple analogy of this is think about you just drove your car for a short road trip, you return back home, you park in your driveway, you turn the vehicle off, you go inside and you forgot something. So you come back to your vehicle 10, 15 minutes later and it's still warm. It's still um, recovering, let's say, from that road trip, right? And so that's kind of what the EPOC is doing is it's still recovering, cooling down from the workout. The second reason why I want you to be doing full body strength training is because it builds muscle. Now, I need you guys to get rid of the mentality that you become a professional bodybuilder overnight and all of a sudden you're gonna look too bulky. That is an old mindset that people need to get rid of. Um, that's like being afraid of getting into the car and driving because you think you're gonna become a NASCAR driver tomorrow. It takes years and years and years of ridiculous hard work to even look remotely very bulky and big. Building muscle is very good for burning fat because now if you have more muscle on your body, that muscle is going to require more fuel. So simply when you're eating calories, when you're eating food, more of that energy, more of that fuel is going to be put into supplying and fueling the muscles rather than being stored as extra energy as fat. Now again, full body strength training is what I believe and what has been shown to be probably the best way to do both those things, but it doesn't have to be that way and you of course should be working different kinds of exercise into your routine in order to get good cardiovascular health and enjoy it. You need to enjoy what you're doing if you're even going to be sticking with it. So find a way to get some sort of strength training into your daily lifestyle in order to get those benefits from it, but make sure it's something that you actually enjoy. Get yourself into a community or an environment that is encouraging and beneficial for you to get you towards your goals. Now, while we're on this topic, can we just talk about a quick pet peeve of mine, and that's simply the word toning. Like, what is toning? What, what are we actually trying to say when you say the word toning? Okay, you're, what you're probably trying to say is I'm trying to build muscle or I'm trying to lose fat which I get, if that's what you're saying, then, then I understand, like use that word toning. But most people I think they're, they're just trying to get out of it. I think there's a few reasons why the word toning has gotten so popular. I think one, people, um, they simply just don't want to admit that they have fat that they're trying to get rid of, which I get it, I understand. And then number two, I think it's also a very vague term, which doesn't actually hold you accountable towards actually accomplishing your goal. And that might sound kind of harsh and critical, um, but I think it would just be, the, re the reason why I'm saying this because I think it would be more helpful for you to get more specific in terms of what your goals are instead of this random, vague, general term of toning. Now the larger issue here is something that's much larger and that's finding yourself worth in what you look like. So I understand this might be hard to do and difficult, but you need to be able to separate your self-worth, your value as a person, and the number on the scale because measuring yourself on a scale can be a very helpful tool towards getting you towards your health and fitness goals, but it's a terrible tool to measuring your worth as a person. Your value, your worth as a person comes from the person who created you, that gives you intrinsic value, self-worth, and purpose, giving you unique abilities as well. So that's where your self-worth and value comes from. Don't let that come from something silly like how you look or how much body fat you have on you or the, or the number on a scale, again, Number on a scale, great way to measure your progress, crappy way to measure your self-worth. On that note, let's end there. This has been episode number two of Whiteboard Wednesdays. This is OK Fitness, Educate, Motivate, Dominate, signing off. We'll see you next week.